Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make a vegan funfetti unicorn cake. My channel's called Lillian Peony. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. The full ingredient list is in the description box below. Let's start with adding some apple cider vinegar into our non-dairy milk. Mix that around and leave it aside. Then in the mixer, we add in some flour and some baking powder, baking soda and salt together with some sugar. Let's mix this on low speed. Whilst this is mixing together, we add in our sunflower oil. What we're trying to get to is a sand-like consistency, just like here. Once we get to that stage, we add in our milk mixture from earlier. We add this all in, mix it together, add some vanilla extract. Let this mix on slow until just combined. Once you're done, add some sprinkle and again, mix it very slowly. You just want to add the sprinkles in. Then I have three six inch pans that I have greased and lined. I'm using a scale to make sure my three tins have the same amount of mixture in them. I tap them on the counter to release any air bubbles before I put them in the oven to bake. Next, I'm going to make the gold ears and horn of the unicorn. I use a little bit of fondant, I roll it around and then I use a pin to roll it out. I want to get a thin layer so that I can cut some ears out. If you have mold that looks like ears, you can use the mold at this point. But since I didn't have, I am kind of going freehand, which worked for me. So I've got one ear out. What I'm doing then is putting it on top of the fondant again to trace out and use as the second ear. Once I'm done cutting, I also mold the size a little bit just so I can round them off. Then I need to make two smaller ears that go inside of my bigger ears. I kind of go freehand again, and then once I get the shape I want, I put that on the fondant and use it as an example for the second piece. So as you can see here, I have got them ready now. Two big ones and two small ones stacked on top of each other. In order to get them to stick together, I'm putting a little bit of water on the smaller piece so that it'll stick to the so that as it dries, it'll stick to the larger piece. Tap to get them to stick to each other um, gently and also round off the sides if you feel the need to. I'm using a rolling pin here because I want my ears to have a little bit of curvature. I found that putting them on a rolling pin to dry really helped. Then again, I dust some confectioner's sugar on my board and then I'm rolling out a piece. I This is for the horn, so it needs to be thinner on one side and thicker on the other. Then I put some water on a wooden stick. This will help the fondant stick to the stick. And I slowly and gently roll the fondant onto the stick. I make sure that there is no gap between the fondant as I roll it and tuck in the end. Set these aside to dry for an hour. Once they're dried, I add in some gold luster dust into a very small amount of vodka. I mix this together to create a gold paste so that I can paint the inside ears gold. I found that I had to do this a little carefully and I needed to paint one layer 
Let it dry for a little bit and paint the second layer. Once I was done with the ears, I moved on to the horn. I very carefully made sure that I painted the gold between the gaps as well. For the frosting, we add some vegetable shortening and some vegan margarine into the mixer and mix this on high for about four to five minutes until it's light and fluffy. Then I add in the sifted confectioner's sugar. I am adding this in two batches so that I don't create a sugar dust cloud. I am also mixing this in with my spatula first. Then I mix this on high again until the ingredients have combined. I mix in the rest of my confectioner's sugar and I mix this on high until I get the desired effect. I also add in some vanilla extract. You'll know your frosting is done when it has a consistency similar to mine where it sticks to the spatula. Next, I move on to stacking my cakes. I have six inch cakes, so I'm using an eight inch gold cake board. I put a little bit of frosting buttercream on the cake board so that when I place my cake, it would not move around. I place the first cake and I put some buttercream on it. I level this off and move on to the second layer. I make sure that the second layer is placed in the center and that it's not wobbly. Then again, I put some buttercream on the second layer, make sure the entire layer is, is covered with buttercream and it's level. Then goes my third layer. I flip this layer upside down just to make sure that the top of my cake is as flat as possible. Then again, I put some buttercream on top and also around the side. This is my first layer of buttercream, so this is actually the crumb coat. What the crumb coat does is it traps any crumbs in the first layer so that when you do your second layer of buttercream, it's nice and clean and there's no crumbs in it. I'm using a large scraper here and I'm very gently scraping off any excess. I also noticed there were some holes here and there and that's okay. Just use your spatula and some buttercream and fill in any holes that you see. Just the way I did and scrape again. Once I'm happy with the sides, I scrape off any excess on top. Then the cake is ready to go into the freezer for an hour to firm up. The unicorn colors I'm using are purple, pink, and light blue. I put some buttercream into three separate bowls and I mix in a little bit of the colors that I want. I start with the blue. I mix it until I get the desired color. Then I do the same with the pink. I'm actually using red paste, but I've put a very tiny amount. That way when I mix it in together, it's more pink than red. And lastly, I use a little bit of purple paste and mix that into some buttercream to create the purple color. Once the colors are mixed, I split them into two bags. I'm actually going to use the purple and the pink together. I have a Wilton M1 tip here. Half of it I filled with the purple color, then I filled the pink on the other side. I squish this down and it's ready to be used. For the next bag, I am going to be using the light blue color. I fill this up with all the buttercream that I have. 
I then squish the blue buttercream down towards the tip. I am using a small flower tip here. Then I get my cake back out and I start on the second layer. I put some on the top, I smooth this out, then I start working on the side. Very similar to the crumb coat that I did, but this time it's tried to cover up any, any layers of cake that are peeping through and I want to get as smooth as a surface as possible. So once I've put enough buttercream on my cake, I am using a large scraper here to gently scrape off any excess. I noticed that there were some holes and imperfections, so I went back in and put some more buttercream on those imperfections. Once I was done and happy, I started with the scraping again. Again, I used as gentle of a scrape as possible and also as long as a stroke as possible. A little trick I use as a last step to smooth my buttercream is I wash the scraper and clean it off with paper towel. That can help give me a very smooth surface. Again, I use very light and very long strokes. Once I'm happy, I do the top. After every coat of frosting buttercream I apply, I like to freeze my cake again to firm it up. Then the cake is ready to be decorated. I start with using a Wilton Sparkle Gel Pen in black. I use this gently to create the eyes and lashes that I want. Then I use the purple pink buttercream that I have and make a flower in the front of the unicorn first. And next I move on to the back of what is the unicorn's head. You don't have to do this in a particular way, but I think it's great to be creative at this point. I just make rosettes around what I believe is the unicorn's head and hair and I continue to move backwards. Once I got to the edge I decided instead of making roses I made little flowers. This made the buttercream stick much easier. I continued around the side and then moved on to the blue buttercream. I just put the blue color, dolloped it all around the other pink and purple. To be honest, this is really where I should have stopped. Um, but for some reason, the purple rosette in the front of the unicorn, it bothered me a little and um, I decided to scrape it off and actually change it to the blue color. I also put little dollops of rosette around the big blue rose to decorate it. I think this is a complete personal preference, but I just really like the blue. Um, next, I stuck in the horn and the ear pieces. And once those are in, um, the unicorn cake is ready. I hope you like this video and will try to create your own unicorn cake. Leave me a comment if you do. Thank you so much for watching.